Coordination requires an efficient system to process, store, and retrieve chemical information. And efficiency implies catalysis so that the coordination and intermolecular communication that occurs is rapid and accurate. So all of these cellular processes, as shown here, must have been catalyzed. Here's a reminder of what information storage, retrieval, and processing looks like today. Information stored in DNA is transcribed to RNA and then translated into proteins. RNAs, but mostly proteins, now serve enzymatic or catalytic functions. Proteins are also involved in forming and maintaining cell structures. But what might all this have looked like in a prebiotic world? That's really what we're talking about here. Here's that cartoon of self-replicating RNA. Assume a folded primitive ribozyme, that is catalytic RNA, and a source of monomer precursors. Then, autocatalysis might replicate the same or very similar RNA molecules. How might we get from somewhat limited RNA structures possible with only four different monomers, the four nucleotides, to diverse structures made possible by polymers containing the 20 different amino acid monomers? In other words, how do we move from the self-replication of an RNA world to the RNA-based catalysis of peptide bond formation and polypeptide synthesis. In other words, what are the roots of the evolution of translation as we know it today? Imagine a self-replicating RNA that can also recognize and bind uniquely to a particular amino acid. Now, imagine different amino acids binding specifically to differently folded prebiotic RNAs. And further, because of their unique shapes, the two such structures could also bind to each other. Might they catalyze the formation of a peptide linkage between the two amino acids, as shown here? Could these be the first RNAs with more than one or alternative catalytic functions? And what sort of evidence might support these conjectures? Would a direct interaction, that is, binding between amino acids with RNAs, have been the predecessor to transfer RNAs and their role in delivering specific amino acids to the ribosome during translation? There is no obvious binding chemistry between today's amino acids and RNAs, or any nu nucleic acid. But there may be a less obvious legacy of bindings that might have occurred on a prebiotic Earth. This has to do with the fact that, with a very few exceptions, the genetic code, you may remember, is universal. Which means that any structural relationship between RNA and amino acids must have been selected early, at the start, that is, of cellular life on Earth. So here's the argument. The code is indeed universal, or nearly so. There is a correlation between the chemical properties of amino acids and their codons. So for example, charged or polar amino acids are encoded by triplet codons with more guanine bases. Codons for uncharged amino acids more often contain a middle uracil. These correlations also mean that any early binding of amino acids to specifically folded RNAs would have been replaced in evolution by enzyme-catalyzed covalent attachment of the amino acid to the correct tRNA that we see today using, remember, amino acyl tRNA synthesis, along with the use of an RNA with information dictating a correct order of amino acids to be linked in a polypeptide. In other words, a messenger RNA. And this is illustrated here. We begin with self-replicating RNAs producing populations of variant but related RNA sequences. Some of these RNAs can bind specific amino acids. Another RNA evolves which would contain sequences that could form hydrogen bonds with amino acid bound RNAs. Remember anti-codon-codon relationships we have today. This start of codon-anti-codon -codon interactions between tRNAs and an mRNA would have been selected because it achieves the capacity for information storage and retrieval, which of course adds another layer of complexity to life. So even before the entry of DNA into our RNA world, it's possible to imagine the selection of the defining features of the genetic code and mechanisms of translation, that is protein synthesis, that now characterizes all life on the planet. And all of this would have happened before the LUCA, the last universal common ancestor of us all, since all cells and all organelles perform translation in the same way. The ability of RNAs to catalyze peptide bond formation would lead eventually to diverse proteins. Many would become enzymes with catalytic functions that would even have to include a takeover of RNA autocatalysis by primitive RNA polymerase enzymes. 